Hello everyone, this is Shannon from Not So Po, and today I'm doing week 14 of my 2023 reads. This week I reread a favorite book and started some new things, but also DNF'd a couple of books that were just a little bit too violent for me. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. So first this week I did a reread of Light from Uncommon Stars by Dika Aoki, which is just such a fantastic book. I loved this so much on reread. Um, I loved it the first time and I wasn't sure, you know, how will it feel the second time? It was just so emotional and so good. Um, I do have a standalone review for this, so I'll link it below if you want lots of detail about it. Uh, but basically, this is a science fantasy that follows three women and kind of how their lives intersect. Um, we've got Katrina, who is a runaway trans teenage girl um, who's a violin prodigy, and she kind of uh, ends up getting connected with Shizuka, who is a a violin teacher, but she's also somebody who has made a deal with a demon to deliver the souls of seven violin students. She's already done six and she's looking for the seventh. And then we also follow Lan, who is an alien refugee from kind of a galactic war who has opened up a donut shop and like their lives intersect the way that this book just it has so much humor, but also so much heart. I think I had remembered a lot of the humor and a lot of the whimsy and a lot of like the beautiful writing about food and music and just all of these things, but I'd forgotten just how much it also just is so moving and at times tears your heart out. I cried so much while rereading this. Um, I definitely gave myself a headache from crying so much because it was so beautiful and moving. Anyway, I loved this. It is absolutely fantastic. And I gave it, again, five out of five stars. Next, I finished The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett, which is the first book in the Tiffany Aching subseries of the Discworld series. So my husband, Sush, read this out loud to me, and it was such a fun time. We have all of the Discworld novels. I've read some of them years ago, and Sush has read, I think, almost all of them, again, years ago. And we've been wanting to do a read through of the entire series, but if you know Discworld, it's a lot of books. Um, and we were going to do this once we had finished our Wheel of Time read through. But since we DNF'd the Wheel of Time, we now can move on to Terry Pratchett. And we weren't sure which subseries we wanted to start with, but then Anna Marie at Actual Spinster, who I will link below, um, always talks about the Tiffany Aching series and how much she loves that. So we were just in the mood for something kind of middle grade and joyful, and we decided to start with that. And it was so much fun. Tiffany Aching is this, um, you know, young girl, she's nine years old in this book who lives in this area called the Chalk, where there isn't really much magic. But magical things sort of start happening, and a witch comes and sort of lets her know that those magical things are happening, and Tiffany Aching isn't about to wait for, you know, outside witches to come and fix this, so she starts dealing with the problems. She is, like, such a great nine-year-old character who is a little precocious at times, but also is still very much a little kid and she's dealing with these magical beings in a very no-nonsense way. So she is just such a fantastical character. Um, I loved the just kind of the way that Terry Pratchett writes, which I knew because I like Discworld, and I had never read this series, so this is the first time for me, and I, I really enjoyed it. The last bit, maybe the last third, was a little bit action-heavy for my taste. Um, sort of the, the peak action of fighting against some, you know, monster forces w was really drawn out. And I kept thinking, oh, okay, we're going to end now. And then it just kept going. So that part wasn't so much for me, but the rest of the book was fantastic. And I gave it four out of five stars and I cannot wait to read the rest. Next, I read I Love You More Than Serial by Justin and Alexis Black. This is a picture book that is kind of about a dad having a conversation with his daughter, um, where his daughter has just gotten a new bike and she's really excited. She loves the new bike and she wants to go and show it off to some kids in the neighborhood who had been 
bullying her before in order to kind of brag and make them feel bad. And so this is a conversation where she and her dad are talking out what does love mean? Um, and really, is that the way to handle uh, dealing with people who've been mean to you? So I think that the um, messaging in this book is, is pretty good. You know, it's talking about what is love and, uh, you know, when you love cereal or you love your bike, what does that mean versus loving people and how you treat people? Um, it is a little heavy handed at times. Uh, it's got sort of, I think, kind of advanced language for a picture book, and it's got kind of heavy messaging, I think probably along the Christian variety of love is forgiveness and you should um, be loving to people even when they are mean to you, that kind of thing. Um, but you know, it's, it's okay. I think the artwork in this is actually really lovely. I quite liked the, the illustration style. And so I was trying to find the credit for who the illustrator was in this book, and I, I kind of discovered that it's actually not credited. Um, this is done through a company that basically helps people put together picture books where they provide the illustrations, but they don't cite their illustrators. Um, and, and part of the, the benefit of that, according to the company, is then you don't owe any royalties to that person, etc. But I felt a little bit sad about that because I thought the illustration was one of the really neat things about this book. So yeah, it was okay, um, but I was sad about the illustrator and the messaging was a little heavy handed for me. So I gave it three out of five stars. So then I did DNF a couple of books this week, starting with The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. I had been really looking forward to this because I loved The Vanished Birds, um, Simon Jimenez's debut novel, and I have a standalone review for that, so I'll link it below. It is just such fantastic writing, excellent sci-fi. So this is his second novel, and it's a fantasy, and I'd heard, you know, kind of good things, but mixed things about it. Um, but I've been meaning and meaning to read it. So I ended up buddy reading this with Becca at Read Becca, who I will link below. And I got 20% through it, our first check-in, and I had to stop. And not because this book isn't wonderful. Becca and I had such a great discussion about this because we both loved so much of what this is doing but it is very violent. And if you know me, violence, especially things with body horror, this really had some body horror, is just so hard for me to take. And this got very violent and gave a lot of hints that it was gonna be continuing to be quite violent throughout the rest of the book. Um, and it was, it was too much for me in terms of the amount of violence. But everything else about this book, I really, really loved. So I'm very sad that I'm DNFing it, but I also know that it just it doesn't go well for me dealing with violent things. I get nightmares, all these sorts of things. Um, but this book is so fantastic. So it's this really interestingly structured novel that is kind of about epic fantasy and dealing with um, an empire that is poorly run with bad leaders, that kind of thing. Um, but it is structured where you are switching between perspectives and timelines and spaces and all of these things and kind of set up as a person who's going to see a play about these events. Um, and then you're kind of, kind of flitting between that person who's watching the play and being in the events, but then sometimes you get these um, very supporting characters' perspectives as well as if they were people speaking uh, to the audience in a play. It is just really interesting. I was very attached to all of the characters, even just like side characters that you saw very briefly. I felt for them very emotional, really interesting politics and magic and characters and all kinds of things. So I loved everything except for the violence. Um, so I definitely recommend this if you're interested in some sort of really cool epic fantasy and you don't mind there being quite a bit of violence. Then the other thing that I DNF'd was The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Ose Utomi. This is a new release novella that is fantasy and set in this sort of desert world where there is a 13 year old boy who lives in the city of lies um, where they have basically no water but the Ajungo are these people who will give them a little bit of water but in return everybody has to cut out their tongues once they turn 13 and so it's about this kind of power dynamic dynamic and the boy decides that he needs to go out and find a source of water because the little water that they're getting is not enough and his mom is really sick from that. 
And so this is kind of about his journey. This has like a real classic mythological feel to the style of storytelling, um, which on one hand is kind of neat, but on the other hand, I think that things moved a little fast in this story. I got to about 50% and sometimes it just felt like we were skipping over bits um, and a lot of things would happen that just didn't make sense to me. Like, why is this justified? What is happening? I think also sometimes in, you know, classic, mythology um, or, or folklore you get that where something will happen that it just happens in the myth and it doesn't necessarily follow or make sense but this is written also sort of in an epic fantasy style and so it just was a little bit jarring for me um, the messaging in this is very political it's talking about colonialism and about the impact on different people and about kind of um, coalitions of power and these sorts of things so it's uh, really interesting politics but sometimes it's also a little heavy-handed this felt at times um, as if it were sort of like a parable or some sort of very symbolic story talking about that rather than a, a fantasy that just dealt with those themes, if that makes sense. Um, but even so, it was pretty interesting until I got to the halfway point and then we had this big battle scene and there was just so much violence. It was really graphic and I just, I was not up to handling that level of graphic violence, um, when I, especially when I was already struggling a little bit with the novella. So yeah, so I DNF'd it, um, but it is kind of tackling some interesting themes. So if that sounds interesting to you, it might work for you. Okay, so that is everything that I read and DNF'd this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, you want to chat about them, or if you've read something interesting this week that you'd like to tell me about, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.